Okay, in this lesson we're going to look at um, still bivariate data, but this time we're going to have a numerical variable and a categorical variable. So, um, yeah, we're going to look at that, and then we're going to look at ways that it can be displayed in um, different ways. So parallel box plots, dot plots, back-to-back -back stem plots, they can all be used to describe associations between a numerical and a categorical variable. So when we're comparing them, obviously we're going to have the different categories. So say for an example, we might have, um, if we had the parallel box plot, so we've got our um, number line along here, and we might say the heights of, and so the heights is going to be the numerical, and we might say of all the year sevens, say so year eights, year nines and so what we do is I'm just making these up we would have all these uh, three different box plots okay we might look like this and then so on like that okay so what we want to do when we and say this would be year level would be the categorical variable okay so what we want to do is here where actually this would be our response we're looking at their heights and whether we ch the explanatory is whether they when we change the year levels but what we want to do when there's an association we know that we need to see a change so the best way is often to do comparing either the medians the iqr or the shape so when we compare the medians well on a parallel box plot that'll be we could simply, oops, missed that one, but we could just simply say here, we could say as the year level increased, the median height increased, and then we would say um, with this, this, and this, and then we would say therefore there is an association with it. Now we can also talk about the IQR. So when we um, mention the IQR, the IQR is actually this, um, area in here the middle 50 percent so it's the q3 uh, the q3 minus the q1 so we could on this little one i just sketched up we could say the iqr so the range um, increases as we went up so as we saw this box getting bigger as we went up um, and then the other one we do could be we could compare the shape and we'll have a look about that in a minute Okay, so in this example, we've got a parallel dot plot um, to display the distribution of the numbers of sit-ups performed by 15 people before and after they completed a gym program. So as I said, it says do a parallel, do the parallel oh, box plot, sorry, um, support the contention that the number of sit-ups performed is associated with completing the gym. So when we do this, and I said, you know, you're going to compare either a median, the IQR. You really only have to compare one of those things. So just um, just compare one st statistic. So um, what I'm going to do in this is I'm going to, for example, I'm going to pick the median. All right. So let's do a little bit of practice of how we find the median. So remember, we looked at here, and it said 15 people, so we know n is 15. So you could find the median at n plus 1 divided by 2 spot. So this one we could find at the 8th spot. Okay, so if I count through 8 dots, I've got um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, just checking. So, thirty-two is the median for this. Um, after thirty-two, after the program, and then I could do it was still fifteen people. So we do eight for the bottom one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we can see that the median is twenty-six for this one. So then they've just written that the median number of sit-ups performed after the gym program was thirty-two, which is higher. So we've got that changing word, which is good. Then the median for sit-ups before attending the gym program, and they've written it there. Okay, so we could say therefore we even at this point you could then just go to 
we can conclude that the number of sit-ups performed is associated. They've just put here with this next one, um, this is just another fact you could use that the IQR increased. But the median's probably the easiest one with a dot plot, easiest to find. Okay, here we've got a back-to-back -back stem and leaf um, plot. So it shows the life expectancy of years of the same 13 countries. So if we look again, um, so this is 1970 and then uh, 2010. Now they've said there's 13 countries, so we know that N is 13. So if I quickly wanted to find the median, I know the median's found at N plus 1 divided by 2. So 13 plus 1 divided by 2, so equals the 7th. So if I count in 7, so it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we can see 76 is the median on this one, this side. If I count through 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I can see 67 is the median on this side. Okay, so once again, the median increased as we went from this year, so I'm from 1970 to 2010. So I'm going to say there is an association between year and life expectancy. As we see, the median life expectancy has increased from 1970, and we could say which was 67 years, um, to 76 in 2010. Okay? So once again, you only really have to say that one of them, they're putting both in here in case you need to. Okay, in this one we've got a parallel blocks plot. So we're looking at, um, you know, as the year age group goes up, whether their salary goes up. So this um, numerical value is salary, and that would be what we are looking at. So probably the response. And these is the explanatory. So we're just looking. And we can see that we can compare either one. So in the purple here, we're comparing, I've given a report if you wanted to compare the medians. So we can see that they increase. Um, in the green, we're doing an indication of the IQRs. So we're showing how this box part increases. And then the last one is we've used the shape because the shape of them actually changes as we go along as well. You can see it changes from being symmetric to positive skewed and they mention that in the report. So you've got plenty of examples which you can use to um, template off for your exams. Okay, we've got a couple of questions here. So uh, we've got in the study, there was an association between BMI and neck size. There was 250 men in the group. So we see we're getting a bit of data. And the five number summaries are shown um, below in the table. So here's the five number summary of all the different categories, below average, average, and thing. And then they've displayed it in a parallel box plot. So what percentage of... These 250 men are classified as having below average neck. So we look for below average and they're saying a percentage, but we, we've got 250 in total. But if you look here, they've given us how many there is actually in that category. So when we do, we're going to say 50 out of the 250 and times 100 and we'll end up with 20% for that one. Okay, so with question B, it says, what is the interquartile range for B, of BMI for the men with an average um, neck? So we want the IQR. So IQR is actually this bit in here. Now, it's a bit hard to read on the box plot, but remember they gave us all of that up here. So I can read off the um, Q3 and Q1. So IQR is equal to Q3 minus Q1, which equals 23.4 My oops, sorry, you want Q3 first. So 26 minus 23.4 equals 2.6. So 
So that's our IQR. Now, people with a BMI of 30 or more are class classified as being obese. So using the criteria, how many of these 250 men are classified as being obese? Assume the BMIs were all rounded to one decimal place. Okay. So if you think about it, so we know that we've got the BMI of 30, sorry, is here. So anything above this is their obese. So if we first look, we have this whole section, which is 25% of that. So when you have a box plot, so when we have a box plot, oops, sorry, um, like this, and I'm just going to pretend we have outliers on both sides. It doesn't matter what these sections are of the box plot, I include 25%. So there's 25, there's 25, and there's 25. So this would be 25% of the data, this is 25%, this is 25%. And this is 25%. So we can see here we've got that bit we've got from the Q3 onwards. So we've got 25% of that. So we've got 25% of the 76 above average are going to be are in the obese. Now plus, we look over here on the average. Now we've got the whisker and it goes, but then we have these outliers that are above the 30. And we can actually see how many are about above the 30 because outliers are written as a single dot. So we're just gonna add those four plus the four outliers. Okay, so if I was working that out, 25% um, would just go 0 0.25 times 76, and then we'll add the four, and we end up with a total of 23. Okay. And the next question is, does the um, box plot support the contention that BMI is associated with next size, refer to appropriate um, statistics? Well, that has been put in your notes, but we're going to say, um, yes, it is, because we see the median BMI increases as the next size increases and then you would give the stats and you probably use the medians from the table to make your life easier. So we'd say with a below average neck with a median BMI of 21.6, above average neck with a median of 24.6 and, and, and sorry, and what blah, blah, blah.